Hey, so here to finally finish up uh, getting the mesh on the walls here to close off the, uh, the what's going to be the rooster coop. Um, and you may notice it's a little bit, I don't know if the video shows it that well actually, but it's fairly dim back there, uh, partially due to the board we've got in front of the door. Um, but with everything here, uh, it's going to keep it pretty dark. So one of the things that we're going to add, because um, when I initially designed the lighting and everything, we hadn't really thought about putting in the boards, or the board by the door there is, you know, kind of a, a as a weather guard type of thing to, you know, keep the cold air from blowing straight into the chickens uh, in the in the winter. We hadn't really, you know, that, that really wasn't part of the design at the beginning. So, you know, it wasn't a factor. But I still do have some light fixtures and everything that I can use. So I'm just going to extend these lights up here and put just an old, you know, just the old fixtures that I took out, put one of them up there. And with a, you know, 100 watt equivalent LED bulb will be plenty of brightness for that space for the roosters. Uh, and it'll also make it a lot easier to work in when you're having to clean up and everything after them. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'll probably do that after I get the mesh up just so I can have some options for running the cable through. Um, so, you know, first step is just to get the, uh, get the boarding up for where the um, chicken wire has to join up because I don't have a length big enough to uh, to go from, you know, from the two foot boarding here all the way to the ceiling. Uh, so I'm probably just going to run the boards in line with kind of the top of the, of the door to the, to the rooster coop. Um, just for visual aesthetic at least and it will serve the same fun it'll serve the right function um, and then also get the uh, get the skirting boards put in and closed off so that you know we don't have chickens falling down in behind them and or pooping down it and leaving a mess behind um, so yeah I'm gonna get those boards put up and then we'll start stapling in some mesh and getting the skirting in all right so uh, let's get working
come to what for me is probably the most exciting part of this project uh, as the build itself is done uh, so the coops are all in place everything is in there they are cleaned and populated and uh, yeah I want to show you what we've done uh, there's still stuff that needs to be done for the infrastructure for it like we still got to do uh, the air ducting and everything like that and I'll be doing that next but for right now everything is in place so uh, let me show it to you Before, where there was three stalls with broken metal gates, we now have a coop area separated into two bits. We have the rooster side with their own feed and water and dust bath. See if I can get that to focus on you. Hold on. So, they've got water and food and the old dust bath box I made because you know it's no good for in with the main stuff because it's just not big enough and we've got their roosts so I just built some uh, some braces for the wall and used some of the deadfall that we've cut off uh, cut off some of the trees on the property because why not it makes a natural perch for them and it's all been well used. Everybody's looking happy. Yeah, everybody settled in. They all got moved in here last night. We did take some video of moving some of them in here. So all the boys are in here now to give all the girls and chicks a bit of a break. And so now we'll go look at the main spot. I have my handy dandy helper. Hey, Annika. <laughs> And so here we go. So we we just moved all the roost bars over as you saw in the project. I've left some of the fencing in because as you can see it's still useful as additional roost space, uh, especially as this fills up. This isn't going to be enough, so we're going to be adding in more roofs. For now, we've got just the same six nesting boxes. And we'll be expanding that as our flock grows. I've got plans for that. I want it to be at least uh, three levels of basically this type of thing, with these being on the top. So it'll go all the way up the wall. I may still put them in between because the roosters now have their own light. And yes, we've got waterers, we've got the kiddie pool here filled with dirt. It's a big dust bath and the chickens love it. But this will be a continuing project as well. So this is going to continue to grow. All right. First and foremost, I don't have the heating coming in yet. That's my next bit. Uh, and we also don't have a chicken door to the outside on either pen. So I'll probably do the one in the rooster coop first. Just because a lot of those guys have been really penned up. Uh, 
you know, there was eight of them that were out in our in our other coop with the closed in run. So they had some access to outdoors, but they haven't been able to free range the way they used to. And then the others have all, you know, since we locked the chickens in the pen here as I was still building the rooster side, uh, they haven't been able to free run at all. So the girls typically had more range. I mean, they've, they've been locked in for the same amount of time. But they also, you know, you've probably seen a lot of them. Uh, a lot of the girls molted this summer and just having just the one rooster with them who is active uh, and mature has kept those feathers from growing. So that's why I've got all the roosters over the other side, give the girls a chance to recover before we introduce a single male back in. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, give them a two, three weeks and then we may bring in a rooster again. I may not be Goose, even though he's trying really hard right now to get their attention over here. He's right there. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, he keeps trying to get their attention, but all the boys are pretty calm and, and set in. We put them in there last night when it was, you know, evening. There's a few few fights between the two prime guys, uh, which is Goose and our other, the other of our original four, uh, Penguin, who's right down here in the corner. So you see there's Roadrunner there standing on the bin, and right behind him in the corner is, is Penguin. And he was the other kind of main lead one uh, that's kind of emerged from the original four. And they faced off a little bit last night, but, you know, they, nothing much came of it. There's a few kicks, nothing damaging. And uh, Goose is pretty much in charge and calm, and everybody else, you know, gives them their space. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so we've got to get the ducting in. We've got to get the chicken doors done. We had to take out uh, Chicky Chick, our, our last hen who came in with the 10 from the field. Uh, just because the insanity in here, like we had nowhere else to put her, first of all. Um, but with the craziness in here, as well as the struggles of getting the chicks in, she came in with ten. She now has five. Um, and two of them had actually, in the front half of the barn, you, you've seen where I've, I believe I've pointed out the, uh, the grates in the floor. Well, two of them had fallen down there when she was first bringing them in. Because she insisted on coming in that side of the barn rather than this side. <laughs> And so walking around scrounging for food, they had fallen through the gaps in the floor there. Uh, we got them out, um, but, you know, within 24 hours, we had two dead chicks. And then it continued. Uh, we had another one dead the next day and another one dead, another two dead the next day. Um, and then we were, yeah, well, I know, we were down to six. And so I finally took her and the chicks out, put them in a cage with food and water. Um, because we're thinking just the insanity of all the running around chickens and roosters and everything, they're getting knocked over and she wasn't able to help them up. Um, you know, it may, might be just weak genetics, but I think it was probably just, you know, they shouldn't have been in here. <clears throat> we were trying to do what we'd done with the other chicken who brought back her chicks and just let her integrate them right into the flock. Uh, and we won't be doing that again. Um, anyway, so she's in... Uh, a cage on her own. Like, I'd found one of the chicks that morning suffering. It had a feather stuck all the way down its throat. I pulled that out. Uh, and then one more died that evening after I got her in the cage. So I'm assuming it was that one. Uh, but there's also several others that I'd find at times who'd been knocked over, lying stuck on their back on the floor, getting too cold to move. And getting them back up and then over to her to warm up. And they recovered fairly quickly, but damage is done. Um... So I think that probably had a lot to do with, with the amount of, uh, amount of chicks who died, which is really unfortunate. Anyway, her last five are with her and safe in an enclosed area. Um, and we'll be seeing what we can do about that. Uh, we freed up the brooder now to give them a little bit more space. I've got to clean that out and transfer them over there. It's just whether do we transfer her with them or do we just put the chicks in and with the heater plate and have it just completely safe and no chance of them being smothered or, you know, with this young mother. Because she... She hatched this spring, like she was one. She was the one hen that we had in those first three that uh, that hatched out of uh, out of our bowl and and um, brooder plate experiment that we tried. Uh, so she's still fairly young, and that could be part of it too. Um, <clears throat> you know, she's not like like Chip, who was doing excellent, and the other you know the other Orpington hen who were doing a great job at raising their chicks. They're all, you know, over a year old, where she's just a few months. She's, what, six, seven, eight, maybe eight months now? 
Um, maybe. Probably not. Uh, it's probably a six, seven month range. So, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's fairly young and it was really surprising that it was her who, you know, went out to the bush and came back with so many chicks. <laughs> but it's all a learning experience for us. It's unfortunate for the chicks and unfortunate for our flock because it would have been great to have an additional five chicks. Um, but it is what it is and it's learning and, you know, uh, it will be changing things up in the future. This will be empty. Um, so we're planning on if we have situations with fruity hens, they will be in there. So we'll set it up with some, you know, with some brooding boxes maybe. And, you know, have them with some space to hatch some eggs naturally in there, in a safe space without all the craziness of the main flock. <clears throat> It'll also be a place where we can bring in, you know, again, the juvenile chicks, like, you know, some of these guys out here. And have them in there for the for a while as they get used to things and kind of get this through the mesh bit of contact, um, and then integrate them into the flock more easily. Depends on what happens. So you know, if we get broody chicks like we've had or broody hens, then you know it's a much safer space for them to brood, hatch, and raise some chicks as opposed to you know putting them in a brooder box or something like that. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of doing things the more natural way. Um, you know, and ultimate goal is to have uh, a separate fenced off run for this pen and another separate fenced off run for this pen. <clears throat> so when we do have the outside door, they won't be able to, you know, integrate or, and they'll also be better protected, um, you know, than the, than the one mom who has disappeared and we haven't seen with her two chicks. Um, update on that, though, other broody hen who's taken over the chicks. She's doing great. All five are happy with her. They're constantly together. She's looking out for them and feeding them and doing a great job. So, and they're all more mature anyway and already used to being in here. And then, yeah, we introduced our other chicks uh, last night and they're all scattered around and, you know, getting settled in. So, anyway, this build was a lot of fun to do. I mean, there's still more work to be done. Uh, little infrastructure things and but there's also stuff outside we got to be doing um, and we have plans for that we have plans to do it quickly and easily without adding a lot of outside input on the farm and we'll go over that when we're doing it um, you know we're using our uh, community connections to give us help because we are going to need a tractor to do some of the stuff also you know like we haven't had we haven't had any uh, chickens outside since um, since the mama hen got, you know, disappeared. And uh, so any predators or anything like that, well, hopefully thought it was just a one-time thing and be disappeared, not coming back and, and checking regularly. And then we'll let the roosters out and we'll see if that's true. Um, because the roosters right now are worth less than my laying hens because the laying hens are actually providing something for the farm. The roosters are just something we have to feed until they're big enough for us to feed on them. Um, you know, <clears throat> this is a significant change for us, uh, but it's one I think is the right move for us, and it's actually something I'm looking forward to learning to doing the right way. Uh, you know, because we've pretty much raised all these boys from chicks, and you know, I mean, some of them are beautiful. Like, yeah, we got some really big boys in there, and, uh, and some others who are going to get really big very soon. So. Anyway, I've blathered on enough. <laughs> so, anyway, um, tell me what you think down below. Uh, what do you think of this project and how it's evolved and how it's turned out? I am ecstatic with how it looks in here, how bright it is, how accessible it is, how you know functional it is for what we want to be doing compared to what we had before. Um, you know, this was a barn that was originally, again, laid out for pork, as far as I know. It was laid out for, uh, for growing pigs. And, uh, and the pigs never really worked out on the farm here. Um, and then it was just utilized, you know, as for supporting the cattle operation that was also running here. And it was primarily for cattle for years. And, you know, the toll was told on, you know, these things that were put in in 1975 
and they've all been broken and snapped and just look gross and you know so this looks so much better I mean and I'm really happy with how it turned out um, I'm really happy that, uh, that I didn't actually have to put that much financially into this either um, I wasn't really keeping track of the money we spent um, but the majority of the money actually went to a the paint and B the electrical um, other than that what I bought for this project um, was a one roll of, of three foot chicken wire and a big box of screws all the wood and all the rest of the chicken mesh was stuff that was either on the farm already or stuff we bought for our projects back in the rental property uh, by, right beside the lake so it's it's stuff that was used in my original chicken coop build which uh, we'll put a link to the video there um, <clears throat> back when we were in the rental property and you know so that's where most of this wood came from um, and it's either that or it was here on the farm I didn't spend any money on lumber I spent very little on chicken mesh I bought the one roll and you know everything else was stuff we had that we reorganized uh, we bought some a couple hinges for the gates or for the one gate and some just some hooks so that we could lock them closed uh, even all the slide latches and everything they're all stuff I already had here um, so our financial input on this it was mostly man hours uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with that I'm happy that we were able to build all of this and get it set up with very little like outside input especially with the way lumber prices have been in the current world um, you know I, I didn't even have to look at the prices of lumber because I didn't need to get in um, so I don't even know how much I would have saved on that uh, <clears throat> But I am thrilled that we were able to do that, and I still have wood to do, you know, the expansion of the nesting boxes situation and everything. And that's that's also not urgent because we don't have that many layers right now that we need more. Um, we will soon, but uh, it's so anyway. It's the it's been a great um, use and reuse of material that we already had. Um, so great for the you know sustainability aspect. It's all stuff that we already had for other projects that are no longer happening or no longer needed or stuff that was already here on the farm that wasn't being used. So it's all stuff that's been, you know, it's pretty much garbage and has been recycled into all of this. So thanks for spending your time with me on this. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do this build and figure it out and, and draw it out and see it actually come to life and shift on the fly to make it work better than what I envisioned when I put pen to paper. Um, you know, I think, uh, Hopefully Caroline can, uh, she's got the image, if she can put that up uh, <clears throat> to show, you know, what I was looking at versus what we what we were and what we're at. Um, yeah, so anyway, thanks for spending your time and watching along with this project. Again, tell me what you think of it. Tell me what, what would you do or what would you do to make it better? Uh, because again, this isn't a static project. It's going to continue to grow and evolve as we do. Um, so as I learn more, as I figure out things or have new ideas are going to be added in or changed or shifted because we have the space to do it. Um, so what would you do? How would you change it? Um, any suggestions or anything like that? Uh, put them down below. We'd love to hear from you and love, you know, love to actually be able to get something there that we can implement here and you can see it. So uh, let us know. Uh, and again, anybody you know who's interested in sustainability or living a more you know, homesteading lifestyle, providing food for yourself in a healthy uh, ethical way tell them about us let them know uh, we're here to show how we're doing it and how we're learning it as we go um, you know like I've already know so much more now than I did when I built that first chicken coop you know a year and a half ago uh, 